Greetings everyone, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review from Eagle Moss. This time we have issue 129, we have the Tholian Starship from 2268. So, we're going to have a look at the model, we're going to have a look at what goodies lay inside the magazine. And keep an eye out for issue 130, which is the Borg Scout Ship, which I will be immediately recording after this video ends so it should be up pretty soon as well so hopefully you enjoy both don't forget to like share subscribe and look forward to talking to you all in the comments section as well so here we have our model um very similar to uh, the other tholian ship that we saw early on in the run of this epic collection but we're going to put this to one side and uh, we're going to have a look at this magazine see what goodies lay inside first so stay tuned for the model review later on in the video so nice graphic of a wing of uh tholian starships we have crew one launch 23rd century length 15 meters weapons are tholian web so issue 129 it's crazy it's so good uh, four sections. We have our about the Tholian ship, designing the ship, Star Trek at the Smithsonian, and on-screen appearances. So very iconic uh, profile view of the Tholian ship here. Um, additional details here. So we have particle beam emitters, Tholian web, um, Commander Laskini. I, have, uh, I can't remember. I haven't seen uh, that episode of uh, the original series in a long time. So yeah. You know how to pronounce it, so uh, have fun with me in the comment section there. Uh, aft mounting, just on the back of the wings here. And uh, yeah, some nice close-up shots there to follow as well. So, here we go. You can see some extra detailing here in the aft section of the Tholian ship. Um, when working in pairs, the Tholian starships could create an energy web to trap vessels that invaded their space. So the Tholian starship... Of the 23rd century, um, yeah, they were a highly unusual looking vessel that resembled the tip of a spear. It did not appear to have separate elements such as a command center or warp nacelles or indeed any other parts that normally made up uh, the components of uh, other starships. Uh, it was nevertheless capable of warp speeds and possessed powerful weaponry. So here we have the Tholian uh in our original uh, star trek series as well first sighting of those guys so again we have uh just a little bit about the 23rd century tholians and stagnant technology this could be partly explained by the fact that tholians are extremely xenophobic yes they are indeed as are some people around the world today um do 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 or nice little TOS spacesuits there, which are making a revival in the up-and-coming season of Star Trek Discovery. Um, so yeah, we've got a little bit about the original series, Tholian Web. Uh, poor old Captain Kirk out in space there, so I'm not going to spoil a lot of those. I'm sure you could probably pause the screen and read up on those as well. Um, the portal between universes, the interphasic region of space that the US defined in CC 1768 fell into uh, and which almost claimed the life of Captain Kirk was created by the Tholians uh, of the Mirror Universe in 2155. So there's a whole intricate story um, that connects several eras of uh, Star Trek which is really awesome um, so do check that out. Uh, here we have the Defiant in interphasic form as well. Our Tholian ship, on the other hand, main power matrix, tractor beam emitters, just random parts of the ship here, uh, three of them, uh, particle beam emitter at the bow, and uh, yeah, so again, web filament emitter uh, just in the central sections there as well. Um, bo -bo 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 -bo, so an elusive species, remaining weary. Yeah, just a very mysterious, um, mysterious uh, alien in the Star Trek lore. 
So designing the Tholian ship, the Tholian starship uh, for the remastered edition of the Tholian web was based on the CG Tholian model that appeared in Enterprise. The Tholian starship of the 23rd century was originally designed by Matt Jeffries, the art director and production designer of the original series. Uh, he deliberately kept the concept simple so that the model would be easy and inexpensive to build. There's always a practical story behind why ships look the way they do. But uh, one of the special things about Star Trek is, even though that's the case, far too often do these ships become iconic and uh, just part of our memories growing up watching this fantastic show. So Star Trek at the Smithsonian, um, the largest display of props, models and costumes from the original series was assembled in 1992 for an extraordinary exhibition at the Smithsonian Institute to pay tribute to its enduring cultural appeal. So there's a big renovation of the Enterprise recently as well, that there was a lot of people in the community and connected to Star Trek involved with as well. So it was fantastic to see that because, again, far too often do you see fantastic shows um you know age and you know their props uh just neglected uh to no fault of the creators and uh, but you know the studios can sometimes just uh, ignore them and we, we can't really do much about them but um uh, thankfully a lot of the iconic stuff of star trek has been preserved due to the dedication of past crew uh, uh stars and uh the community as a whole as well so fantastic to see um, so yeah, that concludes the magazine, uh, the Tholian Web, TOS, uh, TV appearance of the original series, designed by John Eves and updated by Mike Akuda. So yeah, Mike has been involved a lot in the remastered side of things. Um, John has to be probably the most prolific designer in this a collection of starships as well, but it's great to see so many of the, you know, the big names uh, ring... Uh, true in this collection, like Doug Drexler and uh, Rick Sternbach and Andy Probert, to name but a few. And um, yeah, so go back, check out the earlier reviews and uh, maybe pick up one or two of them if you can still. Check out the websites, links are in the description. And uh, yeah, so let's close out with the end graphics and let's have a look at this Tholian starship, shall we? So, let's have a look here, shall we? Pop you out there for a minute. It's weighty, it's weighty. Here's our back mount. And ooh, ship is falling down, the ship is falling down. So 9351A slash A for those who are interested. Tholian web spinner. And our traditional Eagle Moss piece. So aft mounted. Oh, that's going to take a little bit of persuasion to get in there. Oh, could probably do a squeeze that in a little bit more. So let's put this to one side. Let's have a look at the starship, shall we? Poof. Da -da. So here we have our Tholian ship. And um, straight off the bat, it, it's, it's heavier than I thought. Uh, very front heavy. Die cast. Die cast. And it's just really the fringes of these... Um, Blade edges, I would call them, um, are plastic. Lovely mould on those, uh, what would they call, power matrices. Um, if you can kind of see it there. Really nice, actually. Uh, the tips are detailed as well. There's like two little pincers. And they're black as well in colour. Um, so overall, it, it does have a very nice metal finish to it. Uh, slight different gradients of colours between the components, uh, between the nose piece, the, the kind of particle emitter area, the body, and then the fringes here. A little bit of a paint debris there, so maybe I can kind of flip that around. Um, I'd say that's the base of it there, so that's not going to be seen really. Um, again, we have detailing just on the port and starboard side, as you can see here, just on the main body of it down towards that kind of, uh, what was it, web funnel that they called it, as you can see here. And again, slightly different paint, just on these inner components, just housing those matrices in there as well. And then a kind of muted 
part here or the web the web kind of funnel at the end there as well so because there's no detail in here i have to say that's the base and uh, there's our beam emitter there's no other kind of detail in here but kind of soft sculpt just on the insides here but again the geometry is quite nice as you can see tip of a spear for sure very aggressive very different um very easy to make back in the day but uh great to see it kind of remodeled and remastered um uh, i think faithfully that you're not kind of overdoing the detailing it's still very kind of smooth and and, and kind of svelte but just that, that little bit of added detailing just kind of meshes it in with the kind of remastered look but still the tos aesthetic there you can see the way the light just kind of seeps through those matrices as well so that's a nice little detail there so uh what do we say that's the base so with the mount let me get my mount here where is it here we go uh, and that should yep yeah. so it goes in between the top blade and along the base there as well now there is no friction there at all it will fall out so because of its heavy bow um it's pushing down here which is kind of putting the kind of resistance in the back there so when it's in it's in without any issue at all so um pretty nice actually overall uh, i think pretty successful too um no major major issues with this model at all i say there's a little bit of a kind of paint scraping on mine but it's in an area that can be ignored and um yeah it's cool as you can see the way the light now where i'm recording it's just coming through the matrices uh you can see my finger and um, so they're very thin and um, you can see them on the far side there as well so that's cool so what do you think of the ship let me know in the comments below so let's compare it to a ship in the line so we can get a sense of scale see if we can see any kind of lineage as well i think you probably know what ship i'm going to be taking out well i should hope you know but it's nice to be surprised as well so here we have the earlier tholian ship that we got in the collection so this one is from 2152 this one is from 2268 so 100 years um of potential development in those but uh, you know 100 years since we saw, saw these two ships so you can see the aesthetic is definitely there um looking at this ship just as a kind of brief review you can see there is kind of because it wasn't as this one is a lot more sleeker and uh, you can see a lot more kind of rough detailing on this ship here but the elements are all the same you have the matrices in there as well with some kind of emissions i can't remember what the components were of these before but uh definitely you can see that uh they are from the same family tree for sure so uh, nice to actually have these two together at last. So which would be your favorite Tholian ship? <laughs> do you like the original one? Do you like the remastered one? Do you like the one from 2152? I think I remember the year it was as well. Um, I'm going to go with this one. Um, I, just, uh, I just think it's nice and cool and uh, very, you know, just ultra smooth, slick and mysterious as well. You're not seeing any kind of great panelling or anything like that as well. So uh, that concludes my issue review of 129, the Tholian Starship Web Spinner. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments below what you think of the ship. And uh, stay tuned for the review of uh, the Borg Scout Ship issue 130. That should be out uh, very soon after this review as well. So as always, I'd like to thank you for your support, your interactions in the comment section. Don't forget you can like, share and subscribe and even check me out on Patreon as well. But head over to the Facebook group for sure and find me over on Twitter and Instagram as well if you want to continue the conversation elsewhere. All the details are in the lovely description box down below. But as always, I've been your local Irish Trekkie and I will see you in the next video. So take it easy and goodbye.